What's the mood like this morning? I know you guys have a short week. You got to flush it, but you know, after having a game where you were up three touchdowns yesterday, how what's what was it like when you walked in? Yeah, um, you know, I think yesterday, you know, obviously it was tough. Um, you know, going home, thinking about it, sleeping on it. But um, you know, the thing about this league is, you know, the next game comes quick, and um, you know, I, I think based off my experience, um, you know, that next day. Um, it's a step towards how you want this next game to go. And um, you can even look at it one or two ways. Like you could take a step back and, you know, feel sorry for yourself, uh, make excuses, point the finger, you know, whatever it may be. Or you could take a step forward and say, listen, this is what we need to get better with, understand what it is, and we take positive steps forward. So um, energy this today was just, that's what the mindset is. Um, that's what my mindset is. That's what the guys around me mindset is. And that's what we focus on. Thursday is going to be here before we know it. So there's no need for us to feel sorry about ourselves. Um, you know, I think that's the really the only way to to deal with it. You know what I mean? Is to get better, to get to think positive, and um, to get ourselves ready to play on Thursday. Charmaine, yesterday aside, you've played Thursday night games before, obviously, in your career. What have you found during your years in the league at, at what creates a, a productive runway up to a, a short week with limited practice time? Yeah, I think just um, being able to flush whatever happened on that Sunday and uh, think positive about that week. Um, I think if you – and I also think as far as like off the field, taking care of your bodies because um, obviously we play a violent sport, a uh, physical game, and, uh, you know, I know a lot of guys are hurt and a lot of guys are sore. But, you know, I think that the necessary steps to make sure your body is ready to play on Thursday I think is the number one thing. How do you streamline kind of your preparation routine as well? Obviously you can't do the volume of, of studying and stuff that you normally would do. In a full week. Yeah, I mean, it just goes back down to execution. Uh, you know, we speak about that day in and day out. So, um, I mean, it, you got to hound in on the things that you do well. And uh, like you said, it's not so much game planning against the offense. Obviously, you have some, some, a little bit of game planning, but it's not like a typical game week. Uh, so you have to, you know, hound in on your fundamentals, hound in on, you know, things that you do well defensively, um, and just as a whole, as a team. And uh, go back to, you know, what you do well. You know, go back to the days when, you know, it's just line up and play football, essentially, you know what I mean, with a little bit of game planning. But, um, you know, a lot of those things that come down to us reading our keys. I mean, uh, Flus talked last week about how you're pretty close to making that impact play. One thing they're working with you on is lowering your tackling mm -hmm. angle a little bit. What's that process been like to adjust that technique? Is that something you've worked with early in your career? Is that totally new to you? What's that been like? Yeah, I mean, it's something that I've been obviously working with my whole career just by being a taller guy. Uh, so, you know, this is not, you know, really my first time that I I work with that day in and day out um, each year just because I'm a taller guy and I understand the challenges that come with that. But um, like I said, with a challenge, you put your head down and you work to it. So that's what I'm going to do. Jermaine, what's it going to take for this defense as a whole to just to create more consistent pressure on opposing quarterbacks? Yeah, I think we're doing a lot of good things. Um, I know from the outside and, you know, just kind of when you look at things from afar, it kind of looks like it's not like that. But when you really dissect it and look at, you know, the hard work, you know, those guys are working hard. You know, they, they're practicing hard and uh, the mindset is there. And, uh, you know, things are going to come up. Uh, and, um, you know, sometimes it take a little bit longer than you want them to. But those guys are, are, are resilient. Those guys are still motivated. And uh, I got complete trust in those guys that, you know, they're going to – it's going to spark up for them. And uh, they got good leadership in that room uh, between Jan, between uh, Jay Jones, uh, between Billings, you know, all those guys, man. They, they they lead those guys. And, you know, the young guys are seeing how they work. And uh, even the young guys, Dex, uh, you know, Pickens, those guys, they practice hard, you know what I mean? And when they get the opportunity in the game, they play hard. Uh, they just got to continue to trust the process, understanding that things are – you know what I mean? It's not going to be glitz and glams all the time. They're going to go through some things just like, you know, they probably feel like they're going through things now. But, you know, that's what makes you stronger as a, as a person. And uh, that's what builds your character. So, you know, I know those guys are, are, are motivated. Those guys are, you know, excited to get back out there on Thursday. Jermaine, have you ever been a part of a team where a player was asked to stay away from stay away from the team on game day and then, you know, not come back for practice? Uh, you know, each team is different. You know what I mean? And, um uh, you know, coaching, you know, um, polls are, you know, handling that in the best interest of the team. So, you know, we're just following along with the, what they tell us and, um, you know, they're going to handle it the best way to their ability. I mean, as, as a team captain, how does it impact you when, when somebody's kind of dismissed slash suspended indefinitely? And how do you keep it from seeping into what you guys are trying to do? Yeah, I think we just got to keep the main thing the main thing and uh, understanding what the goal is, understanding what, 
you know, our mission still is. You know, the leaders are still leading in a positive way. And, um, you know, we're really not trying to let a lot of outside stuff, you know, dissect this football team. And uh, I think that's what the main, you know, mission is. That's what the main communication is, you know, within this building. Um, obviously, a lot of things you can't control. And uh, like I said, you know, Coach uh, Flus and, you know, Poles are going to do the best interest of this football team. There's, been, there's you. been more than just, I mean, obviously Chase Claypool is <coughs> active and all of that noise. But, like, there's been a lot of stuff going on with this team for months now. How do you as a captain – Make sure guys and coaches, the whole thing, like don't devolve into survival mode where you're just trying to get through the season based on everything else that's going on. Right. Um, you know what I mean? It's going to be storms. You know what I mean? You, you, you can't run from those storms. Uh, you got to run to it. And, um, you know, I think that's just what the that's what the, the, the main thing that's being said in the building is. Uh, we're not shying away from anything. You know, that's if anything is making us better, it's building us closer. It's meshing us together as a football team. And, uh, you know, sometimes you got to go through some stuff, you know what I mean, to, to get on the other side. And, um, you know, I think how you handle those storms, um, it's going to be the ultimate test of who you are as a person and who you are as a football and who you are as a football team. And, um, you know, I just think, you know, adversity is the number one teacher. You know what I mean? It builds character within yourself and it builds character within the people around you. And um, you just got to keep one foot in front of the other and just know that, you know what I mean? These storms are going to end one day, and when they end, we're going to be ready as a football team for sure. How do you process that, though, from going from from Buffalo, obviously, where you were winning big time, to now, all of a sudden, in your career, dealing with, with storms, as you said? Yeah. I mean, this is not my first storm in my life. Uh, you know, I think, you know, that's credit to my mom and my dad for, you know, instilling that in me as a young child, just to be able to, to handle it when things like this happen. And uh, I think it's, it's very individualized like you got to look at yourself in the mirror right and uh I think that's my message when I talk to guys like you know even in Buffalo everything wasn't just winning 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 we had tough times there um so it was just about us connecting as a team um not pointing a finger but you know just figuring it out you know it's like a puzzle man you got you got to figure it out one way or the other but you know winning and losing is the same thing I know we look at losing now but the process is the same you know you got to come back the next day and you got to continue to do what you did the week before, whether you won or whether you lost. And, uh, you know, I think that's a lot of things that, you know, people sometimes don't understand. Like, even this journey that we're on right now, you know what I mean? We're going to overcome this journey. But, you know, the process always looks the same. Even if we, you know, would have won the game yesterday, we still had to come back and get ready to play on Thursday. So as far as the process, the process is, is always going to be the same. But, you know, sometimes, obviously, in the situation we're in now, things are in front of us. So we got to own up to those things. We can't shy away from it. And we just got to attack it. Simple as that. Sorry. Uh, along those lines, in Kansas City last week, I mean, when you were in Buffalo, you guys had some incredible games, playoff games. How difficult was that for you to be in that stadium against that team when the score got to be where it was? You know, I would say it was tough. Um, you know, I'd be the first to tell you that. But, you know, I think it's good that some of those young guys got to, to feel exactly what it feels like. Because sometimes, like I said, uh, you got to get hit in your mouth sometimes to – to be like, hey, this is what it's about. This is what we got to do. And um, this is where we need to get better at. You know what I mean? I think that's the, the number one thing. Like when stuff like that happens, you look at each other and you come in realization like, listen, this this is this is what it is. You know what I mean? We're not running away from it. We're putting our head down and we're going to work. And, um, you know, that's just what it is. That's what the, that's what the message is. That's what my message is to uh, keep one foot in front of the other, man, and everything is going to be all right. Like there's no need for us to panic, no need for us to point fingers, and no need for us to divide. You know, if anything, we come closer together now, man, because that's the type of man that we have. And, um, you know, I'm very confident that everybody believes like that. Tremaine, sometimes a team gets hit in the mouth. They get up and they keep fighting. Sometimes a team gets hit in the mouth and they're knocked out. What gives you confidence that you have a team that is going to get up and keep fighting? What signs have you seen that, you know, you're going to go through this storm and be better on the other side? You know, I just think, um, you know, obviously just the way the season has been going. Like, I've seen – you know, how guys came back the next day. I've seen the communication that we had, and nothing was thrown in the towel. You know what I mean? Nobody surrendering, nobody retreating. Um, you know, if anything, there's a lot of soul searching, man. And sometimes you got to do that within yourself. And uh, I think just that soul searching and, like, getting with each other and, like, um, understanding what the mission is and understanding that we all in this together. Like, not one man is going through this by themselves. And uh, as we can continue to lean on each other, that's the only way you're going to overcome it. And uh, I could see that. I could see guys continuously coming together you know what I mean like it's not like it's just 
straight down. Like, it's some positive stuff that we can take throughout this as well. You know what I mean? It's not like we're not, I feel, you know, obviously there's no more victories, but we're doing some good things. You know what I mean? And I know we say that day, week in and week out, and we're not necessarily getting the results that we want. But at the same time, there's some good things that we could take away from it. So it's about taking some of those good things and taking some of the bad things. And now let's turn it around. Let's put it together and like, let's go get a win. But, uh, you know, that's what makes me confident because I know the guys that I'm going to work with, I understand what the mindset is. And obviously when you spend more time with one another, like you understand like, hey, this person thinks like I think. And, um, you know, once you have that and once you have a lot of people thinking that same message, you know, um, it, it you know makes you very optimistic about the future. Thanks, Jermaine. Thank you. Thanks. On the pick, Ian, what are you reading as your yeah, so I, uh, same deal as what I kind of what I thought last night. Um, I read it more as running versus man. I talking with Justin after he thought dude was off enough, or maybe I'd sit on a spot uh, and said I decided to work out. He threw to a spot, um, and then you know that was the result you got to get. You get so um, yeah, we got to do both of us got to do a better job of just being in sync there, and um, something that we we got to get in sync about and you know that's on both of us to to get that done and make that play in that, that situation how do you get that ironed out how do you guys kind of make sure that that's something that you are in sync with before the play yeah um i mean you you, you know talking to the different coverages and down and distances for that for that route um you know obviously third and long situation there and um maybe a little longer uh than we would normally run that concept per se but um you know, a route I'm trying to get past the sticks on so we can get a first down and, and keep the drive going there. Um, obviously, I think we were, we would have been in four down territory anyway. But, um, yeah, I'm looking to get past the sticks there. And, um, yeah, we just got to do a better job being in sync in terms of, you know, him feeling what I'm going to do. And, um, yeah, we just got to be better all around there, both of us. Cole, you know uh, Chase Claypool as well as anybody. Yeah. What, what was your reaction to him being inactive for this game? And as we were just told, he's going to be inactive for next mm -hmm. game as well. Yeah, just unfortunate. I mean, obviously, um, Chase is a really close close friend of mine, and I've I've known him for a long time, going back to uh, going back to college, and um, you know, really unfortunate that it's kind of had it pan out the way it has so far. Um, but obviously, you know, Coach and Ryan are making a decision that they feel is best for the football team, and um, yeah, so that, that's just kind of where it's at with it. Justin said yesterday that he's had to have multiple conversations with Chase about managing the display of his emotions. Can mm -hmm. you shed any light on, like, did something happen in practice specifically with him in regards to that? No, I can't I can't speak to that. Not Nothing specifically that I, I can remember um, in terms of, like, an outburst or anything like that. Um, that being said, I know with what we're going through right now, guys are frustrated and um, – you know, Chase is, a, is an emotional guy, an emotional player, um, and things tend to come out with him like that. But um, I mean, at the I can't I, I can't speak to anything in terms of happening in practice this past week where there was an outburst or anything like that. Yeah, it's something that's been close with Chase, and obviously is a key part of this this organization. What do you relay to him about if or how we can salvage this relationship with the team? Yeah, I mean, look, I'm I'm just gonna be there for him as a friend. You know what I mean? Um, at the end of the day, we're all adults here, and you know we, uh, you, everyone gets to make their own decisions and can say what they want to say on things, and you know act how they want to act and or whatever it may be. So, um, but as a friend, like I'm, I'm always there for Chase, um, whether he's here, or somewhere else, wherever it is. Um, you know, I'm a guy that always, always be there for him, and if he needs the advice, you know, uh, you know, I definitely want to hit. I haven't been able to hit him up yet, um, but we'll hit him up, you know, today after we're done with meetings and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I mean, look at the end of the day, that's you know, on, it's on him to do what he's got to do, and um, just as a friend, I'm going to be there for him. So what changes, if any, did the Denver defense do on the pass coverage that might have affected the inability to score a little, you know, halfway through the third, fourth quarter? Towards the end of the game, you're saying? Yeah, well, I felt like we were running the ball really well uh, coming out of uh, going into the second half. We had that good drive in the third quarter to put us up 28-7. We were running the ball well, and then um, – we get that drive. We're, we're running the ball, moving it, moving it well, and then unfortunately have the uh, um, the sack fumble there, where you got I think it was forty seven, who's mesh charging Justin. Um, so really unfortunate, like really just unfortunate. He's he's meant to be unblocked there. Um, we're running a movement pass. We had been running the ball really well that whole drive, and you know maybe sneak out a sneak a boot there with with the, how the run was going so far. And um, yeah, I mean they mesh charged Justin there and. Uh, we're able to uh, get the strip sack, which was, I thought, you know, the game-changing play there. Um, 
so yeah, they did some things in terms of, of the mesh charging with Justin on the movements to try and prevent him from really breaking the pocket. Um, so, but at the end of the day, I thought we were running the ball really well that second half, and that's kind of what we were sticking to uh, going there. Do you think that the, the stuff you were running yesterday is more in line with the identity of your offense? Yeah, I, I will say, like, I guess positives going from yesterday. Um, I felt like there, were, there was more of an identity to the offense, and you could, you could feel that out there, um, especially for those first three quarters. Um, you know, I know we, it, it was kind of a mold between, you know, using the playmakers. You obviously, you saw what, you know, DJ and having Moon, uh, what, what they can do to stretch the field. And I was able to get some stuff underneath and obviously high, high, highly executing the run game as well. So you saw Khalil do some really good things. So um, you saw a good mesh of everything that you kind of wanted to see at times. And um, hopefully we can lean more into that and kind of keep progressing with it. The challenge of doing it against a defense that's not. Yeah, really good. Well, really good defense line coming up um, Thursday night and, you know, quick rebound here. And, um, you know, a lot of the guys that we played last year are still on that team. So you can use use the tape from last year and, and look at it. But, um, yeah, we're going to have to be creative in some, in some regards, but also go at them and wear them down up front and, um, you know, understand that, you know, this de this defense front is, yeah, I think, one of the best in the league. On your second touchdown catch yesterday, can you yeah. just kind of walk through what you saw in live action and then maybe anything different that you saw on film, not only with kind of the way you moved around, but then obviously yeah. the way Justin kind of manipulated that? Yeah, play. so, well, we're, we like to run a lot of those. You see me a lot, like, I block out and, you know, we're faking a run and I'll, I'll go to the flat and works well when you run the ball a lot. Um, they definitely came prepared for that type of stuff on the movements and whatnot. So they were playing soft on the edges. Uh, wasn't really able to get to the flat like I'd want to. Um, the corner stayed wide. The end stayed wide. He wasn't really playing the run too much. So I tried to shed him. Justin was out trying to outrun. Um, I kind of just felt felt the void in the zone, so I stayed back. Uh, just I saw him periphery me a little bit, so he just gave it time for the linebacker to fly through and then dumped it off. So it was a, it was a good play by Justin uh, to have that vision and, and patience to – to let me find the, the void there in the zone. The value for you guys to be able to hit on some of that improvised stuff. And yeah, I mean, that's great, you know. Um, I think that's something that's come along, um, and I've seen that in practice, uh, not only with me, but with other guys as well. So, um, obviously, you want to see more of that. And, you know, with Justin's legs and his ability to kind of extend plays, um, that, that's, a, that's a really good sight to see. On Back the board, there's day. a fourth and one earlier in the game. It was on your guys' first, first drive, where you guys at the 50 and you punt. Um, yeah. You guys have gone for it in, I guess, worst yardage situations, the Green Bay game. Were yeah. you surprised in that situation that they opted to punt in there instead of going for it? Um, I don't know. Not necessarily. I mean, you kind of – I don't know. No, not necessarily. I think early in the game, I think, you know, their offense hadn't been, hot, you know, doing too well the past couple of weeks. So maybe, you, you know, coach's decision to kick it off there and, you know, maybe pin them and – um, kind of let them see what they can do. Um, so, no, I wasn't that surprised with that at all, no. Back in, Notre Dame, back in Notre Dame, was there anything special or different that coaches or teammates did to help Chase channel or express his emotions and passion in a positive way? Um, no, I mean, I don't know if I can really speak anything special. Um, look, I think at the end of the day, um, Things are like when you're we're, we're winning a lot, you know, so things are all right when you're winning um, and it's frustrating when you're losing. So that, that that's kind of what I'll leave it to on that. I mean, um, when you're winning, everything's fine and all things are good. And um, you got to it, it, things get much harder when 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 you got things in the line and, um, and and you're losing consecutive games. Cole, from your from your vantage point, you know, Chase very well, obviously. Why have things devolved the way they have with, with him in this organization? I, I go back to the losings. You know, I think losing uh, can, it can be hard for guys to deal with, and um, it's been hard for me to manage. But you got to find ways to um, get back to work, clear your mind every day. You know, it's hard. Um, look, haven't won. A, I mean, I, I haven't won a game in almost a year now, and um, trust me, I take it home with me, and it hurts, man. It hurts, and uh, it's hard to deal with it. But you got to. We we all got to be adults about it and be able to move on and. Um, you know, be able to trust the process set. And uh, it can be hard to do sometimes when things aren't going your way and, um, you know, maybe you're not getting the targets you want and you're not winning and all those things kind of add up and you get frustrated. And um, But you, you have to be a, a man about it, be an adult about it, and be able to to reset your mind each and every week and, and, and just look to improve yourself individually at each and every day. So when you go home last night after a game that ended the way it did, yeah. 
Is it, is it worse than the previous week because it was yeah. so close? My grand, my my grand, my grand, uh, my grandfather always used to say uh, uh, he was a baseball coach, but um, he 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 the one zero losses were so much worse than the ten zero losses just because of you know those feelings he had, and especially a game like that when you're up and you're in control of the game and and you lose like that, um, yeah, that hurts. It hurts for sure. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Cool.